coming to the last uh, few slides of this talk, I thought I should add some uh, practical points for insulin and the administration because we have noticed during our workshops, insulin workshops, that most primary care doctors are not confident enough in counseling the patient on where to take insulin and how to take insulin. I just thought of insulin including or retaining a few slides. So insulin can be started at any stage of disease and diabetes. There are some guidelines or studies which say that you should start insulin as early as possible, maybe after one drug fails or two drug fails, or if it is severe hyperglycemia, HbA1c below uh, above nine, you have to start insulin straight away. There are some guidelines which say all those things. But in practice, we all know we don't want the patient to be pricked and we try to strike a balance at how, how much we can delay the insulin. So it's not uncommon for us to start insulin after two or three oral antidiabetic drugs have been taken there by the patient and sugars are not controlled. In fact, most of the Indian guidelines state that you have to consider insulin after three drugs have been tried for the patient in optimal dosage or in maximal dosage. So various protocols are suggested on how to start the insulin and uh, how to intensify the insulin, etc. See, theory-wise, theory you are supposed to give uh, you know, so much of insulin. Uh, you have to calculate per kg dose of insulin, 0 0.1 in, in, uh, unit per kg, 0 0.5 unit per kg, depending on the situation. Then you have to calculate the total daily dose. You have to give two-thirds of the dose of the insulin in the morning and one-third of the dose of the insulin in the evening. Those kind of things, the guidelines are suggesting. But in practice, it might not work that way. That is a problem. Suppose the, the guidelines, as per the guidelines, you calculate the insulin dosing. And it comes that the patient needs 24 units of insulin in the morning. And uh, like if, uh, like say about 16 units of insulin in the evening. But uh, most of the patients with that kind of straight away starting dose might go into hypoglycemia. Then patient will be afraid to take insulin again. So in practice, we actually start with much, with much lower doses like say eight units in the morning, six units in the evening, or maybe if it's very severe hypogly hyperglycemia, then we might give 10 or 12, but usually not more than that, unless we are sure that the patient will be under observation, like IP patient or something like that. So uh, you start with a slower, smaller dose, you motivate the patient to check sugars every day or every second day. And depending on the sugar levels, you increase the insulin doses by two to four units after every reporting till you reach the target. Uh, it says in some guidelines that if you fail to reach the target sugar levels for the patient in three to six months, you have to send the patient to a diabetologist. But in practice, it's very rare. If, if you have some practice with dealing with diabetes, it's not very it's, it's very uncommon for patients to be having uncontrolled sugars after two to four weeks of being on therapy, either with drugs or even faster with insulin. You don't need to wait uh, three months or six months to send the patient to a diabetologist. You can send the patient Earlier also, if the sugars are not controlled after one or two months of being under your care, if it is mild to moderate hyperglycemia, if it is severe hyperglycemia, you have to send it earlier. Don't take a risk with the patient's life. Improper use of insulin, uh, the needles, whichever needle which, which you use may, use may lead to pain, bleeding, local bruising, breaking and lodging of the needle under the skin. The dosing might not be accurate and the commonly feared lipodystrophy. You can't give insulin in lipodystrophic skin anymore. Injections of insulin in use should be kept at room temperature. Again, bear in mind, this room temperature is, a, uh, is, is the ideal room temperature, not the room temperature which we get in most of India, which is about 30 degrees. Here they mean actually, uh, room temperature they mean 15 to 25 degrees roughly, but not about 30 degrees. The skin should be dry before injecting. If the injection site is cleaned with alcohol swabs, let the alcohol fully evaporate. Otherwise, the pain will, the, the site will sting because of the alcohol, not because of the injection itself. Injecting in root hairs should be avoided. Otherwise, you might give the patient an injection abscess in the long term. Short needles like 4 to 6 mm with fine gauge should be used. Nowadays, 24, 26 gauge needles are commonly used for insulin administration. Never leave the needle attached to the pen. Insulin products should be stored at between two to eight degrees, store the products in the refrigerator and do not store in the freezer. Frozen insulin is frequently of no use. You can't freeze the insulin, uh, allow it to form crystals and then thaw it and um, uh, the patient might think that it's the same. It's not the same, the structure will be different. 
So what are the insulin injection sites? They are the anterior abdominal wall. You keep two fingers around the umbilicus and you can prick in all directions after two finger gap. In the anterior and the lateral aspect of the thigh, the upper outer quadrant of the buttocks and the back of the arms or the triceps. These are the usual injection sites. The anterior abdomen is the most preferred site for insulin administration. It moves lesser, blood supply is more stable over there, so insulin absorption will be more stable. Uh, it's very convenient for the patient to take also. And there's a lot of space in most of the people. Many of the people with diabetes are obese, so their abdominal wall is vast, a lot of area to inject. So rotation of insulin sites, the injection sites, it prevents lipohypertrophy and it optimizes insulin absorption. So it's very easy actually. See, the, the shape of the pattern doesn't matter as long as there is a systematic way to the uh, changing of the sites. You can go zigzag, you can go crisscross, you can go in an S shape, whichever you choose, no problem. But the patient should stick to it. Okay, the patient should not change the pattern midway because that will increase the chances of being pricked in the same place too early, too soon, uh, and may increase chances of lipo hypertrophy. So the sites have to be as far uh, apart as possible as the pricks go on. So in one area, let the pattern get completed, then the patient might move on to another area. So once the patient is out of sight on the abdomen, and the patient can go on to the thigh. Once that is over, can go on to the buttock if there is someone else to give him the insulin and then move on to the arm. That way, that way he can keep on rotating the sides. Now, it's, it's uh, not good to keep on reusing the needle. Uh, when giving insulin yeah it is it's a problem people don't uh, people can't afford uh, frequent expenditures on needles uh, changing needles every day will add anywhere between 2 to 3 rupees to about uh, 10 to 15 rupees on the cost of the needles itself per day um, but as much as possible it, it should not be used more than two or three times even in practice because you see in the pictures with each prick the tip of the needle is bent more and more and the more it is used, the more painful and the less accurate the dosing of the insulin will be. So, as I said before, the insulin product should be stored between 2 to 8 degrees. Storage below 0 degrees should be always avoided. Whatever is in use should be kept at room temperature below 30 degrees. If the person is, the patient is taking insulin via flight, it should be kept in the hand baggage and not in the check-in baggage because in check-in baggage, there will be a risk of insulin freezing at that high altitude. Should not be taken like that. Should be kept in the bag along with the patient. Insulin should not be kept in a locked car with closed doors because in the heat also the insulin might get deactivated or denatured. I think we have covered most of these points.